Welcome to chapter seven. In chapter seven, we're gonna do a quick overview of the most common elementary steps in reaction mechanisms. You can see an example here where we're showing a reaction with a nucleophile and an electrophile. So we're going to go through lots of examples of how nucleophiles and electrophiles work. Before we do that, we're going to need to define what electrophiles and nucleophiles are. An electrophile is an electron poor species. File means living. So electrophile technically means electron living. That means that it is an electron poor species that wants electrons. A nucleophile on the other hand is nucleus living. That means that it is electron rich or has electrons and wants a positive charge. When we're looking at this mechanism, you can see that the nucleophile or the electron rich species, which has a negative charge, is going to the electron poor species or the electrophile. And this is how a lot of reaction mechanisms are going to play out. If you identify the nucleophile and the electrophile, then you just need to draw an arrow from the nucleophile to the electrophile. You can see several examples of electrophiles here. Our first example is a carbocation or a carbon with a positive charge. The R groups mean that you can have anything attached. So for example, you could have ethyl groups, and that means the carbon has a positive charge. Our next example, you can see, has LG. LG stands for some sort of leaving group. We're going to go through examples of what good leaving groups can be, but as a general rule, a good leaving group is going to be something that is a weak base. So for example, you could make that leaving group a Cl minus. In this case, the chlorine is the leaving group. Here's another example. Notice that we have an H bonded to a leaving group. Just like our previous example, we could make our leaving group chlorine, and then the Cl is again our leaving group. In our last example here, we have a carbon-oxygen double bond. Why is this an electrophile? Well, remember that our bond is polar with electrons going towards the oxygen. So that means there is a large delta plus on the carbon and a delta minus on the oxygen. So this end is the electrophilic end where the delta plus is. And a nucleophile can attack the delta plus. Now let's take a look at nucleophiles. Again, nucleophiles are going to be electron rich and looking for something that is electron positive. So things like hydroxide that have a full negative charge are going to be good nucleophiles. Also things that have delta minuses, like NH3, are going to be good nucleophiles. Let's look at some other examples of nucleophiles. We already talked about hydroxide, and that's what RO minus is. You can also imagine a methyl group as the R group. We also already talked about ammonia, and you can also imagine that any amine with different R groups is going to be a good nucleophile. Here's another good nucleophile, and that's a carbon with a negative charge. And we are going to talk about more examples of what we could represent here with a negative charge. In our last example, we have a double bond. A double bond has pi electrons that can be nucleophilic. You have an example of a double bond here that can react with positively charged species 
and we're going to see a lot of reactions where this pi bond can react as a nucleophile.